After leaving the UK in January 2020 to drive around the world, we can't believe that despite all the things that the world has thrown at us, here we are three years later in Japan. After trying to navigate the complicated customs process... Do you speak English, please? No. We managed to get help from some new friends. But even so, it was still complicated. You cannot take apart the pallet on the landing area. Um, it has to be completely wrapped and loaded by forklift into a truck. After renting possibly the smallest truck, we held our breath as they loaded up the pallet. Eventually we cleared customs and started driving north. Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. Dale Carnegie. We've been driving for about four hours. We've arrived at this rest stop now. It's about seven o'clock, half past seven at night. And we're going to try and unpack the boxes, I think. Mongolia? <laughs> I think we've got a bit of unpacking to do, love. We may have. Because we can't even find the bed at the moment. Yeah, no bed. So, uh, yeah, let's get busy. Can you we just had an earthquake warning and the whole van is rocking. That's really quite crazy. That's really very, very weird. Feels like we're driving and we're not moving. The doors are moving. I don't like that. That's really odd. <laughs> Our second earthquake in just a few days. But this one was much stronger. It literally felt like there was a couple of people on each side of the van rocking it. Being from the UK, this is new. Should we be panicking? We looked out to see what other people were doing, and they seemed unfazed by it. I guess this is something we'll have to get used to. Good morning. Well, the uh, the packing up last night, it started, but I wouldn't say we're anywhere by any means done. We still got loads of boxes. We've got stuff piled up there. We've got boxes under the bed in the back. So we're gonna spend an hour or so this morning just trying to get ourselves a little bit organized yeah you cannot be unorganized in this smaller space doesn't matter how organized and how small the van is we still can't remember where everything went i know we don't even have that much stuff and we still don't know where everything goes mariana found the most important thing what's that your wine glass Yay. <laughs> Although we have got a man down, Bob from Roswell. Yep, his head fell off. <laughs> so we're also just checking the tire pressures because the van's been sat there for a while. And when we did it at Ricardo's garage, we didn't have a pressure gauge because we packed our stuff. They're a little bit low, so we're just topping them up. Amazingly, we've managed to get all of the boxes in the boot. They're all in. Yay! <laughs> we, uh, we'll have to try and find a recycling place on the way to, uh, to drop them off because they don't have that many big bins and stuff by the sides of the roads here, but they do have those, those recycling spots in, in little villages. So we'll try and find one of those. We've got the kettle on because we haven't got propane. We're still on the camping one. And Marianne's just bought lunch from the breakfast and lunch chicken fried noodles with some chopsticks and some little chocolate buns this it looks really nice it so we'll just really have to nice. we can heat that up in the pan and it's good to go oh it's come up good oh they all come in mayonnaise sachets so i figured i'd squirt a little bit on to get the japanese experience how are you doing love it's very tidy isn't it everything's very neat um we haven't had a bento box yet, but we've been messaged and told we have to try bento boxes. But this is our roadside service station bento box. Mmm. Mmm. Bon appetit. We've got our map of Japan out, so we're going to get it on the side of the van and show you where we've been and the route that we are planning. We flew into Tokyo and uh, we drove down, spent the first night down here in Mount Fuji, then stayed uh, with Ryan and Aikiko down here. And then we did a little route, went down to the onsen, 
back to theirs, went back to Tokyo to pick our stuff up and uh, then we've driven through the city and this is where we slept last night so the plan today or over the next few days we're going to go up to this island is going to be our sort of first port of call but today we're going to try and drive from here um, up and park somewhere near this lake in the middle and on the way we have to try and find propane and fill up trudy and get rid of the boxes <laughs> always a challenge when you have no idea on how to speak the lingo Half past 11, and I reckon it's already must be nearly 30 degrees. It's High 20s. Very hot. It's very warm. Very hot. Yeah, these uh, service stations have been pretty good so far. It was quite a quiet night's sleep, wasn't it? It was very quiet. And uh, they do have these all over Japan. Roadside stations on Google or Mishi. Mishinoeki. Mishinoeki. region of Japan we're driving through now is really really flat it's kind of the first flat area uh, that we've driven through and all of these fields are full of paddy fields there's rice growing I always imagined the uh, houses in Japan to be quite small because land is limited um, but not around here the houses are lovely they're all large they almost look like temples with that traditional Japanese look and the bonsai style trees cut outside in the garden it's really really lovely driving through the little villages but some of the houses look there's like three houses in one garden so it's like the whole different generations of the same family all live together can you imagine three generations of our family living together <laughs> river we're just driving over is called the Tone River. It just makes me chuckle because as a kid when I lived in Taunton down in Somerset in England it was called the River Tone. That's where I used to go fishing. So now we've got the Tone River here in Japan. So very often when we were driving in North America we found most of the places um, on iOverlander for like propane and some park ups and things like that. There's not much on iOverlander here in Japan. There are some spots on there uh, but there's not a lot of propane um, or LPG so uh, we went online and just searched propane supplier near me on Google and there seems to be quite a few so we're heading to the first one to, to give it a bash just can't get over the countryside here paddy fields and temples <laughs> We've got about a mile and a half till the uh, the propane place but we're also keeping our eyes peeled for any recycling bins and I haven't seen any yet. Where did the expression keep my eyes peeled come from? Because that sounds very painful when you say it slowly. <laughs> Just look at these houses though, aren't they cool? They are like and the barber shop sign is international. It's very international. <laughs> so diesel. 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 Arigatou gozaimasu! Domo arigatou! <laughs> I love it, they actually go out and uh, stop the traffic for you, how amazing is that? <laughs> we think that's that building just there for the propane. Yeah. It's closed, isn't it? It looks very, very closed. No, not a chance. So Marianne's just asking a lady, but it looks like they're closed at weekends. No joy with the propane, uh, the LPG, but we might have found a shell station that has it. So we'll just drive and keep an eye out and uh, 
if not we've still got enough gas for today anyway we just can't buy any refrigerated food yet okay the joys of being on the road we've come down to a nearby shopping center because apparently starbucks has fast internet so we've got a big file to upload so whenever we use public wi-fi we use surfshark vpn it creates an encrypted tunnel which keeps our personal information safe i mean the last thing you want is somebody hacking your webcam during those private moments <gasps> we recommend the surfshark one bundle because it gives you the added benefit of getting alerts on personal information breaches virus protection and allows you to browse the internet in complete privacy and right now, Surfshark is offering Tread the Globe followers an exclusive offer, which includes three months for free. And that's monthly protection for less than we've just spent on two coffees. To get started, simply click the link in the description below or scan the QR code and use the code Tread the Globe. Okay, we got three and a half hours uh, to the gas station, which is near where we're sleeping tonight. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the Japanese scenery. Looks like, oh, there's one right at the end. Oh, it's looks blue. Like that looks like. Let me just ask this man. Well, I haven't seen a man yet, but I'm going to go and ask him. There's a big gas station, so I think maybe. We always travel with our uh, propane adapters, so hopefully one of them fits Japan. This is the one we used in the States. I love the way they say no. They just put up their fingers in a cross. No. no. Okay. Any suggestions? No. <laughs> we didn't get that far. We I didn't get... to take Google Translate with me. Oh. Uh... Roads have got a little bit small now. <laughs> I think it's terrifying for them as well because most cars are really small, so there's this big ice cream looking van hurtling towards them. Just can't get over these views of the paddy fields. And how tiny the roads are. <laughs> like being back in Cornwall, love. all this massive bamboo by the side of the road and the gardens on these houses are absolutely immaculate we feel like proper tourists now if you think about <laughs> it how many people travel all over the world to go and stand outside one of our black and white wattle and door tudor style houses and i suppose we're just doing the same here we're just absolutely dumbfounded we're just blown away by the beauty of these properties. Head northwest. So we were just driving, we spotted this car park with some metal sort of wire mesh bins. <laughs> so we're going to Google Translate and see if any of them are for cardboard. Sunday. Dispose. Non-burnable items, put them in a transparent bag. Garbage disposal, combustibles, please put in the designated bag every week. I think we could put them in there. I think it should be all right. Job done. <laughs> Marianne thinks she might have spotted a garden centre that sells propane. Yeah, you know like you go to the garden centres when we were in Canada and they had like the the nozzles to fill up your barbecue bottles. That's what we're looking for. I think that's uh, like maybe farming diesel or something. Oh, like red diesel. Yeah, it's different because oh. that's fuel tax. But well spotted, love. It's not easy trying to find something when you don't speak the lingo and you don't can't read any of the language. It really is. Maybe that sign says propane available all day. Oh. I'll never know because I can't read what it says. The last attempt for propane. What's that? That could be propane there. That looks like propane. Yes, I reckon that is propane. Is it? <laughs> 
Oh, yay! So it looks like our adapters don't fit. Yeah, there's, See, does no, that... there's no thread on that. So after all that, we finally found a propane at a petrol station, but they couldn't fill it up because our adapters don't work. So uh, yeah, Monday we'll have to try and go find a propane specialist shop and see if they've got adapters that work. So yeah, it's uh, not the best, but there you go. We've got enough, we've got enough. It just means we can't use a fridge. Um, so we're still eating packet noodles. <laughs> so it's now a quarter past five. So uh, we're gonna go and find somewhere to park up for the night. And we have found somewhere on iOverlander, so uh, we're gonna go and give it a bash. Okay, so hopefully, just the other side of this village, we should have a park up. These villages at this sort of time of night, early evening, everybody just disappears it's almost like you're driving through a ghost town there's nobody about you don't see anybody it's strange isn't it they just all no. stay in stay in well, that's quite nice isn't it what do you reckon of that my sweetness i think that's a nice little spot wow it's beautiful isn't it Can you see the cormorant there as well? Yeah. That's a pretty good spot, isn't it? You've got people camping down there. Wow. Good find. Ohio. Oh, Ohio. Oh, welcome to Japan. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, good place. Oh. You are very lucky. Oh, it's yeah. very... You can see a very good scenery. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. But this morning is unlucky. Our neighbour was so welcoming. We explained the problem we had getting gas. Seems like camper vans in Japan don't have fitted gas tanks or refillable ones. So he showed us the setup that he used. It's a very standard gas in Japan. Ah, okay. this one? We've yeah, yeah, seen yeah. this one. It's very standard. So this is a normal a normal system in Japan with the little gas canister. So maybe we should try and get one of these. Iwatani kana? And we'll buy a 12 volt fridge. 12 so volt. no gas. Ah. Yeah, no gas. fridge. And then we can plug in. Okay. Arigato. Arigato gozaimashita. Oh, the guy was just so, <laughs> so helpful. Um, he explained that you... you you, we won't be able to fill up Trudy in Japan. They won't have the connections and they won't do it. Um, they can only fill up um, vehicles, not motorhomes and vans. And he also said it's very, very hard. In fact, he said it was illegal to, to put the big gas canisters in your, in your van. So I think the plan is to go and buy um, some more um, gas canisters, maybe a little better cooking stove and a 12 volt fridge. Um, so it looks like today we're going shopping. Well, this weather's terrible, but anyway, I'm not complaining. This campsite's been um, amazing. It's, uh, it's got everything you need. It's got flat parking. It's got uh, a little wash-up station here. And then this area is full of barbecue stations. It's just been such a beautiful, quiet spot here. And uh, as with everywhere in Japan, they've got amazing toilets and everything is always so clean, absolutely immaculate, perfect, uh, which is really something I love about Japan is definitely the toilet culture. And just next to the campsite, I spotted this wonderful looking little shrine here. I'm not sure exactly what it means. It looks like a, a, religious, a religious thing, but we'll learn about that. We'll find out. They've also got a uh, little rubbish 
place so we're taking advantage and getting rid of our recycling and this is what they look like not necessarily your normal your normal rubbish point right i think it's time to get trudy ready and hit the road oh it's not very nice out there it's horrid right first stop today 48 minutes to the uh, the home improvement store to try and find a fridge and some uh, some gas. I like that we're taking our van to the home improvement place. <laughs> Paddy fields are getting a bit more water today. Some of these buildings look like old dojos, martial art training places, don't they? Amazing. It's a big store. He said it was the biggest in the area, so. I think he was right. Look at the size of it. Fingers crossed. Home shop. Wow, it's massive. The shop had a large selection of cool boxes, but unfortunately they didn't have a 12 volt fridge. We did, however, find more gas. Okay, another gas cooker and extra gas done. Um, and they've given us the name of a shop um, just a few miles away that might have a 12 volt fridge. So we'll give it a bash. All of these extra bits in Trudy, she's going to be bursting at the seams. But <laughs> we don't have a choice. <laughs> like this, we just have to go with it, don't we? As Aunt Julia says, it is what it is. <laughs> Mega store. Okay, I can see why it's called the Mega store. Finding a fridge here isn't going to be easy, so I think we better try and find somebody to ask. Armed with Google Translate, we explained what we were looking for, and before we knew it, we were doing our best to keep up with the shop assistant, who weaved in and out through the maze of aisles. <laughs> yeah, I would never find this. <laughs> the good news is they had some in stock, and we are now the proud owners of a new 12 volt fridge. Right, now we've got three hours and two minutes until a service station where we're gonna sleep tonight. So north we go. One thing we have noticed is these luminous flags by these pedestrian crossings. I think what happens is like school kids or something pick up the flag and hold it up while they cross the road and then put it in the container on the other side. Oh, See look there's some more. If you know why that is please comment below because we're, ha we're really uncertain of what it is. Sometimes some of the traffic lights seem so far away but we're on the stop line for that traffic light. Seems weird doesn't it? Thank goodness you're with a professional driver. <laughs> so we've just seen a sign for Fukushima. In case you're wondering, now the whole of uh, the province of Fukushima is pretty well safe. It's a big area, so don't let it put you off. There's only one small part um, by the coast that is uh, still a no-go area, as from what we can see, but the rest of it is absolutely magical. As you can see from our drive today, Okay, question. All the way along they got like these metal, they look like extendable fences, but I have absolutely no idea what they're for. If anybody knows, pop a comment below. One job, just standing there waving your stick at people. And they got people the whole way along. Look, there's another guy here slowing people down with a whistle. 
<laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. It really is fascinating how different countries do different things. In the UK, they just shove a traffic light up. Canada, they'd give you an escort. You'd have to follow an escort vehicle. Yeah, for miles. And here, they wave red sticks and flags at you and blow whistles. It's a bit foggy. We're going over the mountains now. Yeah, the clouds have come down to join us. And so many people don't have their lights on. So here comes the local train. Now there is a law that we found out from uh, Ryan that even if the barriers are not down for a train, you have to stop at the tracks. Um, a bit like a give way, I think they've had problems in the past. So every time you see a train on in Japan, apparently it's a big fine if you don't stop. Heading north, I felt relieved to have finally sorted out our last problems. We're ready to start our Japanese adventures. Hokkaido, here we come.